peace be with you. This is Ben, and today we're going to talk about the three things that are going to cause the desolation. Now what is the desolation? These are the events that take place that will tear our societies down. And the, the, the desolation is prophesied in, in a many uh, cultures and is talked about in the Bible as well as other sources. So we don't just have one witness, but we do need to understand what these three things are that are going to cause it. Now, if we can reverse these three things, then the desolation will be turned away. We do not have to go through it. But if we don't, these no matter what we do, we won't be able to stop it. So here's the first thing. Pride. Now what does pride mean? So, uh, some people might think that it, it means something like you feel that you're better than other people. That's certainly part of it. But I believe that the, the highest meaning of pride is someone who's not teachable. Now what are some examples of of pride that is in our society. We think that we know better and that we think that things need to be altered. For instance, we everything we need to create a just society is already written down for us. It's included in the Constitution and it is included in the Torah but in every religion of the world, if you will look at their holy books, you'll see that it teaches the same basic principles. So all the stuff we need to have a just and good society is written down, but we ignore it. We think that we don't need it. We look for new paths. Whenever something... It's like we have... the. It's like with the grass is greener on the other side. You look at your own grass, you say that's nothing, and so you, when you see some new grass, you're like, hey, that's better. That's what we're, we are doing. One of, one of, a really good example of that is even found in, in my church, where they were speaking about the marvels of science and how science taught us that if we don't wash our bodies then after we touch a, a dead person because there was these doctors and they would touch dead bodies and then they would deliver babies and the babies would get sick and die but science taught us that if that we need to wash our hands after touching dead bodies before we go deliver babies and that that saved a lot of children's lives did but did we really need science to tell us that no because it says exactly in the torah it says that if you touch a dead body you are unclean and that you have to go wash and you can't come in contact with other people for a specified amount of time and so we did not need science to tell us that. In addition to this, our scientists are creating new things. They are taking old things and altering it in order to create something new. But when these things were first created by God, it was in its good and perfect state, usable for us. But we alter it not only does it alter the the makeup of, of whatever it is, but it makes it so that we cannot use it in our body anymore because that's not the way God designed it. All of our all this knowledge that we have accumulated will disappear in but a few moments. 
and we will be left with nothing. That is pride. The act of looking for something better when you already have the goodness. The act of of thinking that you know more than the Creator. You won't let the Creator teach you. The second thing is the destruction of family. Now of course when I say that the first thing that will probably pop into your head is homosexual marriage. That That is part of it but in my opinion that is the final stage of what has already happened. And so with that, that is the complete uh, destruction of the understanding of the family. But that's only the end. So we have to ask ourselves, what's the beginning? Well, that's where feminism comes in. Feminism has taken, it's, uh, it's, it basically it's created a division between man and woman when there's not supposed to be a division because using our specified roles we are supposed to be woven together but nowadays because of the ideas that feminism has taught us you basically have two individuals who just uh, live together and they each do their own thing a man is supposed to provide and protect for his family and lead them and the women are supposed to nurture and love their families and create a stable home. Now, by destroying that, we have that is the beginning of the destruction of the family. Now, all of the calamities that have been prophesied is directly related to the, the destruction of this family unit. And we have set ourselves up for something really horrible because of it. We need men and women to understand their roles and to understand that it is God's intent that by helping each other using your roles you become bound together. Now with that with what comes with feminism is an increase in sexual immorality because the women are not worried about where they're going to get their resources from because they can do it themselves. In addition to that we see um, a continued increase in immodesty, an increase in homosexuality, an increase in in a pornography and it's because the that everybody is thinking of themselves as an individual and going off and doing their own thing that they don't that they don't feel they don't have to be woven together the third thing is bloodshed now we're going to break that down into a couple parts the first thing is that if a nation goes out to war against another nation outside their own land then you are not having the justice of God with you. Now this could be for any nation not just the United States I'm talking to, to all nations because uh, we are above national interest right now and we all need to live by these principles the nations that will live by these principles will be better off through the desolation. Now, a nation that invades doesn't matter how just you think your cause is. If you go out of your territory to attack another an enemy, you do not have the protection of God with you. Now, if you're a bigger nation, you're going to overcome by your own strength. But there's a catch to that. Every nation that will go out to war against another nation will have war poured down upon it. It's just a matter of time. Maybe not right away, but it will happen eventually. 
So that's the first thing. The second thing is, of course, abor abortions. A God cannot ignore the thousands and thousands of children that are slaughtered. Now, we say they're, they, those little people, they're not even people. They don't have any rights. Only the woman has the right. Now, no matter what you believe, that child is a creation of God. Doesn't matter how old it is, or its potential, or its problem. Now, God says that when righteous blood is shed, it comes up to him for vengeance. So, we are having all these, we are having this righteous blood of innocent children who have done nothing being spilled over our land. And God cannot ignore that. And so he will have to take action to balance out the blood. The only thing that will do that is war. And so at least America is facing a, a potential bloodbath in the coming future. Now the final part of the bloodshed actually has to do with our animals. Now, I'm not saying that meat-eating in itself is wrong. What I am saying is that the mass industrialized slaughter of animals is wrong. And it's not just going at the slaughter too. From birth to death, these animals are in torment. They are innocent creations of God. God cannot ignore his creations when they are suffering like that and he will be forced to take action in due time. Now, it would be better if we could slaughter animals by our own hands and to do it in as peaceful and as uh, gentle a way as possible but through mass industrialization so the slaughter of animals is, is uh, spilling unnecessary blood and that blood could only be balanced out with other blood and so in America we are creating a horrible imbalance that God will have to answer because it is in God's nature to balance things out call it whatever you will you want to call it the principles of karma that's fine it's that balancing out God has to balance it. And so we are facing in the entire world a balancing situation. And that is what the desolation is. It will balance out. If we don't do things on ourselves, God will do it. He will balance it out himself. Now, the time is becoming absolutely short. There's not a lot of time left. The desolation has already begun with Fukushima. Fukushima disaster is an extinction level event. Like, it could wipe out all life in the Pacific. It has the potential to do that. Now, if it does that just to the Pacific Ocean, imagine what it will do to the nations touching the Pacific Ocean that have to breathe that air and take things from that water. The desolation has already begun only by following the three things that we have talked about will we be able to prevent the next step of the desolation which will be a massive war